Hi, I'm Lori Newport. I'm one of your instructors at Cal State San Bernardino for the audiometry course. And I wanted to do a couple videos for you guys. This first one uh, corresponds with Unit 3. I want to talk about the audiometer and also the audiograms. This is a very old audiometer, but all of them share different features. So you can find these on the audiometer that you have. You can look at your Unit 3 notes uh, and as we go through. I've already plugged it in. Here's my power cord, so I'm going to turn it on. This is my power on off switch. And on this one, as I turn it on, uh, it illuminates a light. Yours may or may not do that. Uh, earphones we're going to talk about in a little bit. The attenuator, that, that um, name of that button is a little tough for some of my students. Attenuator is what we call it. Um, because we can attenuate the sound. We can turn it up or down. Um, so this, the attenuator goes with the dB level. Um, and I'm turning it down right now, and then the other way goes up. That adjusts your intensity or volume of the beep. Uh, for screening, you're going to want to set that at 25 dB or 20 dB. My preference is 20 if your room is quiet enough. If it's not, then uh, 25 is also acceptable by the state. The other uh, thing I want you to know on the audiometer is the frequency selector dial and that one on this audiometer is on this side. You can see that it's now changing my frequency from 250 hertz up to 8,000 hertz. Uh, when we test, we start at 1,000 hertz. It's a little hard to read that on this audiometer, but I have it set at 1,000 hertz and 25 dBHL. This is called the interrupter switch. I'm going to actually turn my um, my intensity way up so that you can hear this beep coming out of the earphones. So as I push the interrupter switch, then the tone goes on. You push to present. Um, you also have the right left selector switch, that's this button here. On this audiometer you can choose between right and left. Uh, or even bone. As an audiometrist, you won't be using that bone function. That's for a bone vibrator. Um, but so let's turn it to the to the right ear for right now. And then I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about this um, test present button. You may or may not have that feature on your audiometer, or it might say norm off, norm on. You want it to be off. What it means is when you push the interrupter switch, you get the, um, the beep. Now if I put it on norm on, it's going to be on all the time. And when I push it, it goes off. Obviously you don't want it to work that way. So if you have that function, make sure your test present or your norm um, on off is on the off choice. And then here is uh, masking. You won't need that as an audiometrist, but that is on this one also. The reason that that is on there is uh, audiologists also use portable audiometers and sometimes we need to mask. Um, one other thing you may have on your audiometer, and I don't have it on this one, is the ability to choose between a pulsed tone or a warbled tone or just a steady beat. I prefer the pulse, and this is what it would sound like when you push the button down. Just a beep, 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 and I prefer that. It's just more noticeable for the patient. I use that for my kids all the way up to adults, uh, and I like that better. You can use uh, either the, the steady tone or that beeping tone. It doesn't matter, um, but that's the one that I prefer. So let's talk about these earphones then. These are called the TDH39 earphones, and they're usually marked red and blue. The blue is for the left ear, and the red is for the right ear. You're going to want to put these on your patient yourself, uh, and what I like to do for that is to push them all the way up to the top. Um, hold the left one in your right hand so it goes on their head the correct way, and you'll have them facing you. If they have hair, have them put their hair behind their ears and then put it on their head and while you're holding it on their ears then pull oh, hard to do without a head 
pull these down to where it fits tight. Okay, that's the best way to put the earphones on. I wanted to also uh, show you a listening check. That's what you want to do. Every time you set up your audiometer, do a listening check. So I will put the earphones on myself. That's what you do for a listening check. Pull them down so they're snug. Um, you want to have your chairs sit, set up the correct way so that the child's chair is facing away from the audiometer about a 90 degree angle to where you could see their face but they cannot see your audiometer. Um, plug it in and before you bring those kids in what I've told you in the notes is to set it at 50 dB and then just run through all the frequencies that you're going to test. So we would listen for a thousand hertz. Okay, I heard that one. Let me switch it to the right ear. So I hear that in my right ear and then I'm going to switch it to 2000 hertz. I heard it. 4000 hertz, I heard it. Switch it to left and go 4000 hertz. Down to 2000. Down to 1000. So your listening check is very, very quick and it just tells you whether you have everything plugged in correctly and there's a tone coming out. But what I prefer to do, it takes just a little bit longer, but you only have to do this one time, is actually find my threshold. So I'm going to go down on my knees so that you can see this mark. And I, um, I just go ahead and present. I have to be quiet so I can hear. To the soft, softest level that I can hear, and I can hear it at 10 at 1,000 hertz. Let's see, about 2,000. I heard that, heard that, no. I heard it at five, so at the, uh, 10 dB at 1,000 hertz, five dB at two, and five dB at 4,000 hertz, that's in the left ear. Um, even just checking one would be okay, but I tend to go to the other side. So let's go to a thousand hertz. Again, ten. I hear it at five. I heard it at zero, 4,000 hertz. So as I'm, I'm testing myself, I don't have to follow the, the protocol that we'll learn in the next unit about 10, down by 10 and up by five. I just have to find my threshold. And that tells me, is this room quiet enough for testing? Since I got myself down to zero, between zero and 10 dB, then I can test, I can screen all my kids at 20 and feel confident that if they have normal hearing, they would pass at 20. If my thresholds were more like 15 at 1,000 hertz, then I would want to go up to 25 so that I make sure that those kids can hear. Um, one last thing I want to show you is uh, these audiograms. These may just be something that you'll be reading from the audiologist, so I wanted you to see them. This is not what you'll be doing as an audiometrist, but this is a, um, a, a normal audio. You can see the frequencies across the top 250 hertz to 8,000 hertz, and decibels down this side, 0 dB down to 110 dB. So the farther down these markings go on the audiogram, the worse the hearing is. Since all of the markings, the X's and the O's, the O's are right ear, X's are left, since they're all between 0 and 15, they're all above that, this is completely normal hearing and these little less than signs are your bone markings. So this person heard with the earphones on and with the bone vibrator on all of the beeps within normal limits. So that's a normal audiogram. This one here, you can see it looks the same, it's just moved down. So this one, instead of being normal hearing, is a sensory neural hearing loss. This person hears, their softest beeps they hear are about 45, 50 dB and the worst is about 65 dB. The air and the bone are both right on top of each other, this being air, this being bone, air, bone. Both of those are air, this is bone. If the air and bone are on top of each other, that means the entire ear hears the same, so that's a sensory neural hearing loss. I'm gonna flip over to this page. 
This one is also sensory neural, but instead of being flat, this is what most of your sensory neural hearing losses look like. Better hearing in the low frequencies, worse in the highs. So that's very typical, about 95% of your um, hearing loss of sensory neural follow this pattern. But again, the air and the bone are right on top of each other, so that's sensory neural. And then this one is conductive. You can see it looks like the one that was on the previous page. All the X's and O's are pretty flat across the 40 dB range. Um, but all the bone markings are up here. So this person heard with the bone vibrator behind their head much better than they did with the earphone. That tells you that the loss uh, is from something from the outer ear or the middle ear, so this is called a conductive hearing loss, and it is medically treatable. So just in case you see audiograms from the audiologist, I wanted you to be able to roughly read those. And that's it for this video.